Hello everyone, welcome to episode seven of the Six Tastes as a fast track to optimal health. So in this episode, we're gonna be exploring the salty taste, looking at what the benefits are, you know, what are the physical benefits and, and some of the emotional benefits that the salty taste brings into the body. Um, looking at some of the key risks and side effects of overindulging with the salty taste and also looking at how the salty taste affects the doshas. Um, and salt is a, is a really interesting one because if we look at the other five tastes that we discuss in this series, um, they're all understood in terms of their medicinal and, uh, and therapeutic properties, both within Ayurveda and also in conventional science, conventional medicine, conventional nutrition, they all have their benefits and their, and their values. But salt is almost out on a limb in many ways because modern science, um, modern medicine, modern research has, has, has heavily demonized salt as a, as a food source. Um, suggesting that it only comes with with health risks particularly cardiovascular health risks and and in and of itself it doesn't have any actual health benefits it doesn't have any medicinal benefits it doesn't bring anything to the table in the capacity of a, of a therapeutic tool and I think that's a, a really a significant gross misunderstanding of what salt is what salt is made up of and the role that salt plays within the body because if you look at most traditional systems of medicine, particularly Ayurveda, also um, traditional Chinese medicine, Tibetan medicine, you know, they've used and turned to salt uh, as, a, as a medicinal component for thousands of years. They've used it to treat ailments. They've used it to prevent ailments. They've used it to make sure that our digestive system is in balance. Um, lots of the, the very specific Ayurvedic complex prescriptions have salt contained in, in them to help support digestion and to help alleviate congestion, you know, lots of specific medicinal benefits. Um, and I think like most things in the Western world at the moment, I think if we're to view salt from the holistic perspective, if we're to view salt as, medic as me uh, medicine, as something that brings therapeutic value to the body, we have to re we have to reperceive the way we understand it because like a lot of things we have a tendency to to overindulge and it's not or it's not salt that is the problem it's both the overuse of salt and it's the use of an unnatural version of salt a processed refined um version of salt that isn't natural and that the body doesn't recognize because if we're having too much salt and, and, that, and that salt is, is refined and, and processed that's where the health implications and the health um, you know, the damaging effects of salt begin to, 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 to flare up um, but if we actually understand salt and it's a, a really key episode for me this one because of the fact that it's so misunderstood and if we can re-perceive salt if we can if we can understand what salt does and, and how it helps the body and you begin to integrate it in that way you'll typically find it can really induce some some tremendous often discernible benefits on the body particularly digestively speaking and i think when we're talking about salt, it's so important that we spend a little bit of time just delineating the different types of salt. Because on the one hand, salt can be, like I said, incredibly health promoting. We're gonna go through the detailed health benefits shortly, but comes with very, very specific evidence-based health gains. But on the other hand, if we're using un, you know, if we're using processed, unnatural salt, it, it comes with a whole host of disease risk factors and it's not the salt it's the type of salt so the three main categories of salt that you can use or buy are common table salt sea salt and mineral salt and and the big problem is that research shows most people in most households in the western world the salt we use is common table salt and you know if it's so important to emphasize the, the fundamental necessity to, to do away with table salt, to not buy it, to not use it, to not let, let it even enter into your mindset of, of, of that being salt. Because table salt is heavily refined. They take cheap, 
poor quality natural salt and it's refined heavily using lots of chemicals particularly aluminium um, and they add in very high levels of sodium so if you look at table salt it's about 99 percent sodium and and it's the sodium in in excess that creates the risk factors for cardiovascular health um, if you compare that to uh, natural sea salt or mineral salt it has a sodium level of about 85 percent so a big difference so table salt it's damaging it's high sodium and it's laced with chemicals it's not salt okay we don't we shouldn't view it as salt it's like comparing white refined sugar with pure raw organic honey they're different products so that then leaves us with the two good types of salt sea salt and mineral seas uh, a mineral salt so sea salt is is in you know a really pure form of salt and it literally involves drying out salt water so that the, the salt crystallizes in the sun you know it shouldn't have anything done to it it's done in massive um you know hot countries where it's just it's just dried and then the the, the the salt crystals are harvested it's got a brilliant mineral profile it's got all of the health benefits of of salt um with none of the nasties but there is something to be aware of because um if we're using sea salt we want to make sure we're using naturally dried sea salt rather than desalinated, desalinated uh, sea salt because they use lots of chemicals to do that um, so if you're using sea salt just make sure it's pure um, naturally dried but to my mind mineral salt is is better still so mineral salt i'm sure most people have heard of himalayan pink salt you know shot to fame over the last five or ten years um, and all mineral salt is it's still sea salt it's sea salt but it's sea salt that dried up that you know thousands and thousands and in, in some cases millions of years ago they think lots of the himalayan sea salt come from the primordial oceans that covered the planet you know at the beginning of time so they're you know millions billions of years old um and they're they're dried up seabeds that are then harvested and the key thing about mineral salt about the himalayan pink salt in particular is that they have a very high level of trace minerals in them um if you look at if you analyze himalayan salt you know it's got high levels of calcium high levels of magnesium and potassium and copper and iron and they're trace minerals that are essential for the proper functioning of the body and they're hard to obtain elsewhere um, so they're loaded with these key minerals and it also has a low level of sodium like i said about 85 percent so to my mind the options you've got are pure sun-dried sea salt or pure mineral salt ideally you know uh, pink himalayan salt you can get celtic sea salt lots of different types but there it's absolutely essential to separate those two out from the common table salt which is just damaging okay um so if we're prioritizing the use of of this top quality salt ideally mineral salt it means not only are we not consuming all of the chemicals and the processed your know, high sodium content content of the recite or the refined salt it also means we're getting all of these health benefits that come with with salt you know salt is such an amazing mineral and and so much so that in america the fda the food and drug um administering body you know they they released a statement showing that sodium chloride which is the chemical structure of salt they defined it as a mineral substance that is of great importance to the functioning and health of the human body you know so if that's a key statement to come from a body such as the fda you know, that if we didn't if the body would very quickly stop working if we didn't have enough sodium in our system um and it's uh, most of those benefits most of the benefits that salt brings to the body as a as a, a medicinal or therapeutic property involves its ability to regulate and control water volumes in the body um it's a it's a key regulator of 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 uh of osmosis and, and water level and water level balance and electrolyte balance and we can see that practically if we eat something salty if we put something salty into our mouth it will result in a discernible increase in the amount of saliva in the mouth it it it, it, it pulls water it can pull water it can it can move water to the site of of, of you know where the salt is um 
And that's what gives it so much of its therapeutic properties, ability to lubricate and moisten. Um, and if we look at some of the physical benefits of the salty taste, lots of them are involved, you know, involved the digestive tract and the digestive system, particularly with regards to regulating digestion and, and the increased assimilation and use of nutrients. Because in the same way that salt increases the secretion of saliva, it's also proven to increase the secretion of key digestive uh, components, your hydrochloric acid, bile, pancreatic enzymes, pepsin, digestive enzymes, which means we, we consume food, we eat food, and it's going into a digestive system that's more able to, to break it down efficiently and effectively. That in turn means that we extract more nutrients from the food we eat. And this is a, uh, a theme that runs through lots of the tastes we've spoken about in this series, that you're consuming good food is only 50% of the equation. To benefit from that food, we need to be able to extract the nutrients into our cells. And salt facilitates that. And it's really interesting if you ask people, you know, how do you season food? Salt and pepper. You know, salt and pepper, the, the most commonly used seasoning in, in, in the culinary world. And together, you know, they are such powerful nutrient assimilating tonic herbs or, or foods. And if you add top quality salt and top quality pepper into a meal, then typically, statistically, you extract 30% more nutrients from that meal than you would without those two in it, which means you cook yourself a really wonderful, you know, healthy, nutritious meal with all, you know, with salt and pepper compared to without, you're getting 30% more benefit for no extra work, no extra effort, no extra food. And that's to, to not be making use of that makes no sense at all. Um, you know, and we'll be covering black pepper in the next episode when we look at the pungent taste, but it's just really important to, to, to understand how effective salt is in this capacity. Um, and also in terms of digestion, salt has a mild laxative effect because it, in the same way that it results in a pooling of saliva in the mouth, it can result in a pooling of, of liquid in the bowel. It increases the volume of liquid in the bowel, which helps to loosen the stools, which means we're able to pass stools more efficiently and more effectively. Um, which means if you, if you struggle with you know, with low grade constipation or irregular bowel function, you know, we should be having a bowel function, a bowel movement every day. It's a pillar of health. If we're not, Look at your salt intake. Are you having enough salt? Because it's going to help stimulate bowel function. And that's integral because a healthy gut, to have a healthy body, we need a healthy gut. If the gut is toxic, if the gut is dysbiotic, it means our gut immunity drops, our inflammation increases, you know, we become quite unhealthy quite quickly. And the key way of preventing that is to have a daily bowel function so that we're clearing waste out and and salt can facilitate that and particularly with that comes an, a, 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 a real benefit for things like IBS gas bloating distension because salt has been used classically in Ayurveda as a way of alleviating those kinds of problems for millennia and it's something that we see a lot of in clinic because I think because salt has been demonized so much by Western science, we see a lot of people who don't have any salt at all, because if you're not eating refined food, if you're not eating processed food, then the only salt you're going to get into your body is the salt that you cook with or you season with. Um, so if we, when we look at food diaries and we ask people to, provide an, an overview or an account of how much salt they're adding into their diet, what you can actually see is that they're not getting anywhere near what they should be getting a day. They're probably in salt deficit. They may be getting you know, five or 10% of what they need. And if we see people presenting with gas and bloating in that situation, one of the first things we recommend is just to add, you know, half you know, to one teaspoon of top quality salt into your cooking and food every day. And very often that will make a really clinically significant impact upon reducing the symptoms of gas and bloating and distension. So with those kinds of digestive ailments, it's really something to be aware of, particularly, like I said, if you're not eating um, processed foods, which we shouldn't be, which means we need to be getting our salt from healthy alternatives. Um, 
the salty taste sword in particular is that their salt is anabolic salt is an anabolic food source and anabolic food sources are those that help to energize and build and nourish the body so if you think about our body it's it's in a continual state of dynamic change you know our cells are dying and cells are being regrowing our cells are regrowing our body is continually regenerating and the salt salt and the components within the salty foods and salty tastes they help facilitate that regeneration of healthy tissue the salt you know, salt has a key role to play in muscle health it facilitates the delivery of nutrients into the muscles it facilitates it gives strength and energy to the muscles it's brilliant for alleviating muscle cramps and muscle spasms any kind of you know any kind of muscle based cramps waking up in the night with muscle cramps those kinds of things make sure we're getting enough salt in and and salt is also used to increase general energy and vitality and just general oomph if you're feeling a bit flat a bit tired a bit fatigued again check on your salt intake and probably you know if you look at the general research around the health benefits of salt electrolyte balance is the one that most people are aware of um, that flags up most red you know most readily and it's in terms of the evidence in terms of the impact it's where salt becomes essential because you know electrolytes are just a key 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 component of of bodily health we electrolytes are essential for the body to be working and functioning op optimally because electrolytes they carry electrical charges they carry look they carry electrical charges they are essential for nerve function they regulate water levels in the body they support the functioning and, and the integrity of the nervous system uh, they regulate muscle function they help to support kidney function and through that the regulation of blood pressure and there's, there's several different types of electrolyte but sodium is the biggest and most important electrolyte in the body um, so if our sodium if our salt level is low too low then we haven't got enough of the sodium electrolytes in the body and these things begin to deteriorate we can get poor sleep poor energy poor muscle regeneration spasms cramps um, poor concentration poor nerve function you know our body moves out of homeostasis whereas if we've got a sufficient not an excess but a sufficient level of electrolytes and sodium it's key to to, to, to putting the body into that place of homeostasis so really 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 key um, the, the salt you know because it regulates kidney function because it helps to support good healthy bowel function this the you know, salt is integral as a detoxifier it helps keep the body clean it helps clear toxins from out of the body and it helps to make sure that our internal environment is clean and well functioning and that our immune system is not being suppressed by toxins we're not experiencing inflammatory problems <coughs> excuse me problems that come about through high levels of toxins um, because the salty taste um, is is heavy and it's heating it's not great for pitters uh, and kaffirs, but it's very good in moderation for varters. It's a bit of a tonic food for varters because vata is, is characterized and, qu and, and, and quantified by its cold and dry qualities. Because the, the salty taste is heating and uh, moisturizing and lubricating, it pacifies the qualities of vata. So if we've got you know, any vata aggravation, if you look at the, the primary physical and emotional symptoms of a vata aggravation that's overviewed in the introduction to Ayurveda series then the, you know, the salty taste is going to help antidote and pacify those and it's interesting in classical Ayurveda that the salty taste also has a key emotional benefit because it's used as an emotional agent to increase cognitive and emotional energy and vitality and to antidote depression and dullness and a lack of creativity and a lack of energy in our lives so if you're experiencing those kinds of traits again just look at the the volume of good quality salt you're obtaining so you know more so than all of the other five tastes there is a clear risk of overindulgence um, 
with salt. That's true from the Ayurvedic perspective and also from the Western perspective. And if we look at the evidence, we look at the research, it's very clear that we don't need any more than around five to six grams of top quality salt a day. So one teaspoon. Um, and if we're getting that, we're getting all of the benefits with none of the risks. If we go over that, then the risks become exponential, even if we're using top quality salt. And the kind of risks that come with that, there are many because of the fact that sodium is involved in so many cellular mechanisms in the body. But the main ones are these, the inflammation, because the salty foods are so heating, in excess, they can lead to inflammatory problems in the, in the gut and also the skin. The so problems like mouth ulcers, stomach ulcers, heartburn, acidity, reflux, loose stools, diarrhea, and also inflammatory skin problems like eczema, psoriasis, hives, and acne. Because salt kind of creates this water pooling effect, it can lead to water retention, weight gain, bloating, swollen joints, and even congestion in the vascular system, things like varicose veins and hemorrhoids. Probably the best way of assessing if you're having too much salt is, is, is excess thirst. And particularly if, you know, half an hour, an hour, hour and a half, even two hours after you eat, if you find you get excess thirst or you get a really intense thirst compared to other times of the day, that's a cardinal sign that the meal you just eaten has got too much salt in it um, that's a key symptom to be aware of but the biggest risk by far which i'm sure most people are aware of is the the main pathological risk of too much salt uh, is is on hypertension or high blood pressure um, and which is the main one to be aware of because if we're having too much salt then the body will hold on to water levels in the body to dilute that salt down that water increases the blood volume which means the heart has to work harder to pump the blood through the system and that puts up blood pressure which is the catalyst for most cardiovascular problems whether it's heart attack or heart failure or stroke or things like that so it's really 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 important to emphasize that yes salt's got loads of health benefits in moderation with top quality but if we're having an overindulgence, it comes with very significant risks, okay? But if we're having less than those six grams a day, they're not really, they're not risks we need to be worried about or concerned about as long as we're not having six grams in addition to lots of processed foods that are high in, in salt already. So six grams in total, which is another key reason for cutting back on any refined food, you know, crisps or pastries or quiches or things like that because they're loaded with salt. So if we, if we, you know, are to prevent an, an, an overindulgence, to prevent the risks of an overindulgence, the best way around it is to just cap how much we're having. You know, if we're looking at that one teaspoon a day, then if we're, add, if we're ha adding the salt into a lunch and dinner, just aiming for half a teaspoon per meal of top quality, ideally pink Himalayan uh, mineral salt. And that way we're going to get all of the benefits we've just spoken about. We haven't got to worry about the risk. We definitely want to prioritize quality, get the best you can afford. And a great approach that's being used in American public health at the moment is we either cook with salt or we season with salt. We don't do both. So you've got to decide you're making your meal. Do you add your half teaspoon per person, you know, into the meal? Or do you not add it into the meal and do you season the meal once you've served it up? But what you don't want to be doing is cooking with lots of salt and then seasoning with salt because that's going to push us over the maximum uh, volume we should be consuming each day. So in terms of actually applying the salty taste, this is the easiest one. You know, it doesn't require hardly any effort or, or, you know, activity to make sure we're getting the benefits of the salty taste. The simplest way is just to make sure in your kitchen, you're stocking top quality salt and that you're using one teaspoon a day spread over two or three meals. Um, it doesn't have to just be salt in terms of you know, the seasoning. If you look at episode two of this series and you look at the supporting food lists, you'll also see that there's other foods that have got the, the properties of salt and the benefits of salt that aren't actual salt. So things like celery, for example. So check that out. Look at your doshas. You know, if you're experiencing any of the physical or emotional symptoms of avata aggravation, then just try to make sure you're obtaining enough salt. Um, and if you're experiencing any of the problems we've just spoken about, 
toxin, you know, high levels of toxins or sluggish bowels or problems like that. You know, just make sure you're getting in the, the, this recommended volume of, of salt because it's going to really help manage these kinds of problems. So salt is a really easy one to integrate. It's just really important we're doing it safely in the right volumes with the right product. Um, and in the next episode, we're moving our focus onto the last of the six tastes, the pungent foods, looking at the, you know, really the pungent foods are very powerful. They've got lots of evidence-based health promoting disease preventing properties. We can look at what they are from an Ayurvedic and Western perspective, look at the effect they have on the doshas. Um, so I look forward to going through the pungent taste with you in the next episode.